you've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Thin, Cairo Moguls, Mahalo Wellness, McCaffrey's Clinical Mentoring, Local Gold, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Chiropractic Rocks, Winner's Edge, Accident Records, Cairo Tax Pro, Full Script, your online dispensary, and Digital Hustle. Let's hustle! All right, so uh, today is a special treat for you guys. This is an exclusive interview um, with uh, Jamal Frewster. He's uh, out there in Connecticut. I'm out here in Colorado, and uh, we had a chance to meet each other at OK Focus uh, about two years ago. We were just reminiscing on that opportunity that we both uh, met each other and what it was like uh, to transition to where we are today. So it's been uh, a really good uh, off-camera conversation that we had. Um, But let's continue that conversation for this audience today and uh, share with people some things that uh, we can inspire them, give them some solutions, and talk about some topics that I don't know about, but you know more about than I do. Mm -hmm. Let's dive on in. It's it's an honor to be here, Jim, and I'm just so happy to just share some some energy with people. That's all it is. Yeah, and uh, one of those uh, things that we were talking about is uh, um, personal development and I follow a few people on social and this guy is one of the people I follow on social media. So check out his stories on Facebook, check out his page on Instagram, see what he's up to because he is inspiring the new wave of culture and chiropractic. Mm. And uh, I see what I, I, I see you. That's one of the things that we talk about in my group men of iron is I see you, man. I see what you're doing. So everybody else, you should see what he's doing as well. So let's continue. Let's talk about this thing, personal development. Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, definitely uh, entering grad school at Life University. That's some place where I feel travel has been massive for me. But uh, I didn't think that I'd be I, I never would have guessed I would have dove into seminars, into discovery, into um, personal development like I would have. But that's been a really, really big aspect to my life and is what give is what's given me the permission to network, connect with people I never would have all across the world mentors that have really, I say, like expedited or beelined my exponential growth, which I feel as though I'm only able to be where I'm at because I've shown up to so many places and spaces that I've just been a sponge, man. I like, I'm a sponge. Like I love being a sponge. Yes. I'm a little bit more further along in the chiropractic journey of of the student, but I love learning. I love connecting with people and just hearing a little bit more of their story. And with personal development, I mean, we can ask me any questions at all, but I'll say KTC has been absolutely massive. So I've been following Dr. Brett Jones, Dr. Lance Von State. KTC has been a massive community uh, to me. In my second quarter, Dr. Suki Mooker, uh, who wrote wrote the book Beyond Mind, Beyond Body. And he's been a massive staple in me, introduced me to quantum physics, uh, creating my first vision for myself, redefining my life and rewriting what's possible for me. Um, Michael B. Dibley, Dr. Michael B. Dibley. This isn't a name like spoken about a lot, but this man was the first person that gave me permission to be a global 360 ambassador and representing kind of his brand, what he stood for, went over to Europe for the first time in my life, uh, going to Axiom with him and Dr. Jonathan Verderame, who just opened up my world where I met Dr. Sean Dill. I met Dr. Thomas Waller over in the United Kingdom and so many other high level functioning, thriving human beings, let alone chiropractors. And then uh, Dr. Tim Young was probably bringing like a good, like trying uh, tr- a good square to my personal development. I'd say my first few years in school and the fraternity being the kind of like the foundation of that square as my brothers just have allowed me to expand and grow and invite some of those mentors into our space. So that way others who may not be able to travel or another way you can do that, well, you can invite them into your space and they will fill that with all of their knowledge, wisdom, and energy. Yeah. You know, listening to you and your inspiration and the people that have uh, been touchstones on your life, it's really cool because I, I know a lot of these uh, names on a personal level as well. And I've seen the impact that a small few people can make on a profession as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important to, to talk about. Um, Earlier, I was telling you one of the words that you used was permission. And I was telling you how I met John Demartini about six years ago. And one of the things he said to me was you have to give yourself permission to be great. 
And I really think that that's a benchmark for excellence. And when people give themselves that permission, um, they'll wake up earlier. They'll take mm -hmm. more fe They'll take more feverish notes when they're around people with influence. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll show up on time. They'll show up different. You know, that they'll take a lot more self-responsibility for how they feed this, how they feed this. And I think that as a chiropractor, all, all, we all talk about the brain-body connection. Well, the brain-body connection thrives more when we give ourselves permission to be great because we pay attention to our time more. And one of the things I think we should be clear to people is the same thing that makes me and you the same, you in Connecticut, me in Colorado, is we both get the same amount of time in a day. Mm. And we all rotate on the same axis of the earth. So those things are like baseline, like common things inside of both of us that we both exist in is a space and time continuum. But mm. when you give yourself permission to do greatness in this world, you connect with people, you resonate with people. Um, the reason that we have such a following that we do um, is because we're consistent. We show up, uh, we keep on sharing the truth of chiropractic and the beautiful thing about that, Jamal, is uh, we keep free speech in chiropractic. And I think mm. that there's a lot of parts of the profession that don't want to allow free speech in a profession that is supposed to be a healing art. So I just wanted to, you know, go on a little bit about my positioning and why it's such a pleasure to be able to have a conversation with you today is because I see you, like I said earlier in our opening, but I do see what you're uh, capable of doing and you do have some great mentors and you have shown up and that's the most important thing is what they always say Jamal nine tenths of it is showing up for real <laughs> Dr. Lamar says that that was like one of the first pieces of advice he's like just show up like and just show up and that's one thing I was like okay I don't know I didn't know a lot about like chiropractic like yeah I've been adjusted as an athlete but I didn't know the depth I didn't know the expansion. I didn't know the layers. I didn't know the organization. So uh, first, uh, you could say my first year, I just bathed in chiropractic. Like I bathed in like the spaces, like I couldn't get enough of it. And I love that you even pointed out that we have the same amount of time as human beings, which I'd say yes. And I'd say I challenge that because a lot of people aren't present. So time is a man-made construct. And a lot of people, you could say, waste time while there's those that are present in the moment and i'd say like even in this podcast or this episode i imagine we'll dive into a little vortex and we'll come out on the other side and it's going to be insert time time on the clock here but it's like man we were just entering a flow state so one thing that i've learned to do is leverage uh my time and what i'm doing people are like how are you doing so much well one like i got an agenda that is literally my brain so it allows me to be fully present in things and dive in things but it's just being able to navigate with my community and my support systems that allow me to just be, and then I can show up how I'd like to and ideas to flow th flow as I'd like to. And when you put, I found when I'm in a lot of spaces because I'm, yes, I, I, I'm me like, okay, cool. What does that mean? I love connecting to people and it's the spaces, it's the seminars, it's the masterminds, it's the organizations, it's the events, it's the mentors, it's it's the people that I'm, I'm around that allow me to be more of me. And that has cultivated my life's work and my life's purpose to allow others to be more, yes, on the chiropractic table, but especially in the chiropractic profession and healthcare world. So that way more humans can be, more human beings can be more of themselves. Well, what I hear here is there's a change of the guard for the chiropractic profession, and you have uh, a position in that. So I'm really proud of you for uh, doing the work and showing up and being present. Uh, one of the topics we're going to talk about today is the World Congress of Chiropractic, which I should probably know a lot more about, which I don't. So if you can glean upon uh, what you're doing with the World Congress of Chiropractic and uh, maybe what that 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 um, group stands for, um, that would probably help a lot of our audience because if I don't know, and that's the space I live in, then there's a lot of people out there that could probably use your knowledge. Mm. Well, first thing that it does stand for, as I'll say this, is unity with respect to diversity. Kind of let that just sit on in. Unity with respect to diversity. The World Congress of Chiropractic Students has to be what I see as literally a playground or a recess of all of the chiropractic schools in the world being able to come together in a space, space in an organization that is divided up upon regions. There's uh, the Africa's uh, Europe or Africa, Europe, um, Australia, New Zealand, and kind of like uh, that that 
part of the world and then the Americas. And then the AGM or the annual general meeting is the space where we come together once a year to talk chiropractic politics, policies, what's kind of checking in with everybody where they're at. And my first time I went was in 2018, first to an Eastern region or to an America's regional event coordinated by one of my brothers, Dr. Marwin. And I got to see firsthand the responsibility that he had in uh, co-creating that space at Life University for people from all over the Americas to come in and just connect, which is the big thing. And then when I went to South Africa, it was like, man, even just talking about it, like, I could just see myself like in the adventure of like getting on over there and just being in the space of all these amazing leaders that are there to help better chiropractic and have conversations that matter. Because uh, as Brett talked about in a previous episode, as I'm sure you've covered in a lot of episodes, there's this dichotomy or there's this there's this, there's this, you can even quote unquote say war between evidence-based and um, vitalistic quote unquote chiropractors. When uh, the common denominator that comes to the WCCS is that we're all chiropractors and we're all chiropractic students. So let's grow together as it is a, and I say it's a recess because I got this image of all of these schools being in like a ring or in like a big circle. And then recess is the WCCS and we all get to run out like in the middle. And then WCCS is the playground or the found the, the, the space in which all of these students can come together and play and learn and grow and saturate ourselves and have conversations of curiosity, not judgment, and work together to more cohesively perpetuate the message of chiropractic. And what I get the chance to do is um, this AGM, uh, the board of directors talked to me and invited me to actually speak at the annual general meeting um, on solutions or a vision on racism, diversity, and where can we go as a profession and what would it take there and what can we do at the international level to start bridging more awareness, bridging more gaps, raising perspective, raising awareness, and just coming together just to support and just love on one another in a, and I even say this, in a very fun way, because the cool thing is about this chiropractic shit, in case y'all haven't figured out, it's really fun. We get to help people come more alive. And if we can help give permission to ourselves to become more alive and come together in a joint yet individual mission and purpose, then man, the expression, the fruits of the trees that are born out of spaces like WCCS, like KTC, like Delta Sigma Chi, of so many walks and paths of collaboration coming together into this this quite necessarily as Dr. Lance Bond stated, uh, diversity is quite necessarily um, the soil that needs to be to allow for like new expression and um, unification of that diversity is life. And I just I love that because life is quite necessarily just that. Well, some of the things that you say that really should inspire people that are out there watching because there is a change of the guard when it comes to protecting the sacred trust. And I think, I think that, um, you know, when you talk about this, uh, this youth movement, um, you're the future leaders and that puts the hair on my arm standing up. But, Ooh, when, I, look at that. but when I think about like the, uh, the youth movement, um, we really have to protect that um, future. And I do think uh, as I've dove in and I've talked to, you know, people have been practicing for 40 years to people that are still in their collegiate standard to, to become chiropractors. Um, what I've come to realize is that there is a, a huge tenant for protection of chiropractic. Mm. And uh, the reason that chiropractic never sold out to, to the pharmaceutical arena is because chiropractic is uh, it's a standalone healing art. And that's what most people don't really understand in the public's eye is mm. that chiropractic um, when they became doctors, as we graduate them to be today, um, they had a huge turn in their historical presence and they had to start doing things that were not chiropractic standard. So um, as we've developed in a chiropractic space, we have a lot of chiropractors out there that really stand on that doctor word, but chiropractor is a chiropractor and it's done by hand or it's done by a technique that you choose. And I think that that's what you're talking about is um, we're all more alike than we are different and that there is unity and diversity. And when we think about it, um, chiropractic is a, uh, um, it's the future. And I, I mean, all these heads want to talk about like, hey, we should be port of entry. Well, well, chiropractic should be port of entry, but we need to lobby harder and we need to get in and 
when I interviewed Drew Clark the other day, he's like, yeah, I see these like protests outside of these like state houses, but we need people inside those state houses because that's when things get changed to the betterment of, of our culture and our society. And I think that as you talk about this World Congress of Chiropractic students, those are the people that will eventually be in those state houses that mm. if they work hard enough and they build a philosophy around leadership, now mm. we're now we're going to have a course of people that are going to be the change of the guard that will go out there and will protect the sacred trust, but also make the sacred trust um, unsullied. And they'll make that something that's going to be on the front lines of keeping our, our culture healthy. And off, off camera, we we're talking about this thing called burnout and uh, especially in the healthcare professions. Um, and I know that that's, that's a part of our next topic that we're gonna talk about is um, protecting the healthcare person to take care of number one first. And, and what does that look like? I know you don't just work with chiropractors, you work with other people in the healthcare professions. So let's talk a little bit about this idea of um, healthcare worker burnout and maybe some solutions that we have to uh, give people opportunities to make a difference for themselves so they can make a difference for others. It's such a big topic that's not talked about as uh, I've worked with, or I work with functional medicine doctors, uh, I've begun to work with nurses, which is really wonderful. And uh, I've worked with chiropractic students. Obviously I'm a chiropractic student, so I can relate. Um, so in my work, I've noticed that there was this one video that I put out, I think it was like March and there was maybe over a hundred comments on it kind of relating to burnout and what that's felt like. So I guess, what is burnout? What can it look like in the chiropractic student realm? It can look like depression. It can look like anxiety. It can look like suicide. It can look like, uh, in the chiropractic field, um, lack of energy, disconnection from purpose, uh, the lack of energy and the disconnect for purpose, I think kind of go hand in hand in the medical realm. It can look, look like adverse um, medical treatments. It can look like wrong prescriptions. It can look like fatigue. It can look like suicide because the suicide rates, and they talk about this at Emory University, they actually preface their students on the amount of burnout, depression, and um, even some suicide for some of the specific uh, routes that they can take. And I'm like, wow, that's something that isn't really talked about or how I have even heard about it being talked about going into school because, and this is just my university and I love, I love the hell out of life university. It's my, I wouldn't go anywhere else. And uh, there is, you get the ultimate day one, day two of welcoming you in uh, into life university with life leadership weekend. And then you can find yourself, maybe it's middle of first quarter. Maybe it's when you're in the trenches in fifth, sixth quarter that shit's hard. <laughs> It's really, really hard. It requires a lot of time, a lot of your energy, a lot of your focus, a lot of your resources. And if you're not equipped with your purpose, your why, your vision, who you're doing it for, where you're going, and the action steps and strategies to keep you grounded in the vehicle that you are moving with through this this, uh, this, this journey, because it's a journey. It's definitely not a sprint. I was a sprinter. This is no sprint uh, going through chiropractic school. And if you don't have those resources available, it can get very dark. People drop out like after, right after first quarter, we were missing, there's people that were there, 206 of us that were no longer there. And it's like, have you seen so-and-so? No, oh, oh, they're not here anymore, okay. And that kind of happens throughout the journey and it's so sad. And I know even starting from like the end in mind, one out of every three chiropractors that graduate won't be a chiropractor within, within five years of graduating. I'd imagine part of that's burnout, part of its business, part of its uh, injury. There's a whole gamut of things. But uh, back to the point, um, working with these various healthcare professions, it's so easy to just be a servant. It's so easy to just do, do, do. And I just got off the phone with three amazing nurses, like amazing nurses, uh, Michelle Fairney, uh, Jenny Hook, and Marianne Messasar Blair, who I interviewed on my podcast of Soul Coffee. And we just jammed for like two hours on the ins and outs of some of the, the healthcare profession where we're in a very patriarchal society where um, Dr. Fred Barge talks about this. And if you don't know who Dr. Fred Barge is and you're a chiropractor or a chiropractic student, educate yourself. Um, he wrote, are you the doctor doctor? And he talked about, don't you dare bastardize healthcare, which is a service profession. And where I feel where we're at is 
there's the hospital CEOs or the pharmaceutical companies pulling strings that have turned healthcare into a business when the business is life expression of human beings. And we can be subject to insurance, which doesn't allow all the, all the time, because I'm not going to dive into that rabbit hole, but all the time of the care that's necessary for somebody um, in a hospital setting. It looks like patients coming on in and burnout may come from you might not be helping facilitate the results that you want to, or there's this, this, there's this thing where we talk about in KTC and in so many capacities, like the three nurses I told about, I talked to, just told y'all about, talked about it too. Your first patient is yourself. And a lot of people just throw themselves out first because they, when you're going through midterms, the first things to go out the door are exercise, nutrition, sleep, time with your partner, time with your family, time with your dog or cat, and you just throw themselves out. So then when you do show up for the test, you're only showing up as a fraction of yourself. And that shit is a robbery because yes, there is a level of rigor that needs to be instilled and go through, like help things through. And without opening another rabbit hole is, man, uh, I'm black and Peruvian it's not the norm for people that look like me to be in chiropractic first and foremost, let alone to be a doctor, let alone to be a healthcare professional. As we've learned with systemic racism, the system was set up not for people that look like me to thrive, let alone be a cultural authority of being a doctor. So I say that all to say being black or being uh, Latino X um, can put a certain hard mode that it is to go through life. So I say that all to say I was an athlete and I have had certain experiences in my life that have cultivated a level of grit within me and observing my parents to continuously to overcome, even if I might fail a class, like sometimes when people fail a class, like that's it for them or people like that, that, oh my God, people don't have the emotional bandwidth or capacity, one, because they're so tired, two, because they never had to face shit in their life and um, that's just part of the resources that you need to cultivate. It's like, okay, you might fail class, but you're not defined by your grades because when you go to go adjust or take care of people on a mission trip in your practice, they're not going to care. Oh, well, did you have a three, seven GPA? Did you have a, did you, did we on the president's list? No, they're going to care if you can look them in the eye, look them straight in the eye, look them in the soul. And when they ask you, can you help me? You can look them and say, yes. And a lot of people, they can cram for exams. You can't cram to be a good student clinician. You can't cram to be a good outpatient clinician. And you definitely can't cram to be a good doctor or a good human being. And that's one thing people forget about. So with how to transmute and alchemize burnout, I do have a, I do have a process. It's really fun. Uh, it's called the Alchemist's Triune. And the first step is awareness. So you got to know where you're at. You got to know um, what are your habits? What are your beliefs? Where are you on this GPS to life? So that way you can have an idea of where that triangle is at, you know, that we, you turn on the car and that pops on up. You got to know where you're at. You got to know who you are. Brett talks about your unshakable purpose. What is your unshakable purpose? Why are you here on this earth? Ooh, I don't know. Well, I imagine we can probably build that because that's your engine. Step number two, action. A big part to this is cultivating your vision. I've been blessed with the Thought Leadership Collective mentors and like Suki that have allowed me to cultivate my vision and especially my 10 year vision in all senses and habits and beliefs and patterns and skills in eight domains of life. So that way, cool, you have your engine, you have your car, your rocket ship, your plane, whatever your vehicle is, because, you know, all vessels are different. But it's like you have your horizon and you know where you're going. A lot of people don't know where they're going. And if you don't know where you're at and you don't know where you want to go, man, what the what? Like, how can you think you're going to set yourself up for success? Oh, I'm in the flow. Yes. But where are you in the flow too, fool? Because even the ocean has currents that will take you to different places and spaces. But it would behoove you to know where even the ocean is flowing and going. So action is big because then once you know where you're at, you know what your vessel is like, you know where your weaknesses are, where you want to go, your fears, like all these things. And they can know where you want to go. You can start on things. And this is from my chiropractors for sure. But the oil to your engine is your philosophy. Mm. A lot of people miss that shit because we don't get it at the... Uh, we don't receive it in an opportune, what I think humbly, 
um because I, I could be wrong because there's and one there's no right and wrong whatever anyways um it's not it's given at my school in a space where a lot of students aren't ready to digest the depth of what it entails and it's it's you literally universal principles that echo in all aspects of life they're not just chiropractic principles but your understanding and the application of your philosophy will grease and oil your engine so that way it can run smoother a lot of people go through with no lens or no it's like going through it, it can either be the oil or it's like your windshield it's like you're going it's like you're driving but you're not ever wiping your windshield your philosophy allows you to do that because it grounds you in what you're doing and why you're doing it and why wouldn't you do it last part actualization is getting that behind in the driver's seat hands on the wheel so you can actually be what you want to be from your vision in the now so it's a matter of cultivating integrity cultivating habits cultivating rituals because yo i'm not perfect but i have an image and i have a vision and i have mentors and i have resources i have brothers i have other facilitators i have people i have friends that i trust that can hold me accountable to remind me where I want to go, not just in what they say, but how they be. So the last phase of the Alchemist Triune is actually stepping into the driver's seat, realizing you have your two hands on the wheel the whole time, or if you're stick shift, you know what I mean, whatever. Um, but you, you're in the driver's ability because you are the only person that will take you where you want to go doesn't matter where you show up or who you listen to but if you don't put any actualization into that shit you will go, you will go nowhere and guess what jim the beautiful thing is it's not just a triune in this sense it's a triune here because as you become more aware you'll take the action steps will reveal themselves you'll actualize and be differently and then you'll continue in this triangle spiraling on up towards what i think is this this consciousness spiral and if that doesn't resonate for people it's a more awareness of where you're at how you're at and how you be because it is going to be you're going to continuously learn more of where you are and how you are the actions are going to evolve, then the being's going to evolve, then you're going to evolve. And a lot of people don't, a lot of people miss that, man. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Thin, Cairo Moguls, Mahalo Wellness, McCaffrey's Clinical Mentoring, Local Gold, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Chiropractic Rocks, Winner's Edge, Accident Records, Cairo Tax Pro, Full Script, Your Online Dispensary, and Digital Hustle. Let's hustle. I love what you're saying, man. Um, there's a lot of uh, truth. Um, there's a lot of balance and uh, a lot of alignment. And I, I wrote down some notes here just to kind of touch on stuff. Um, the way that you said like the chiropractic uh, student might not be ready for the philosophy. Well, it's just like the chiropractic patient might not be ready for the chiropractic message. And the student just wants to become a doctor mm. and the patient just wants to feel better. Mm, so we have, to, good. we have to look at the outcome scenario is the student wants to cram and they want to show up and they want to become what they're supposed to be. Um, and they're on that path. So we, you know, we have to look at it through their lens as well as their lens says, uh, my family expects me to go to school to become a doctor, not to burn out, not to quit school. And then you're like, well, where did they go? Well, sometimes people fail. And one of the things that we have to realize is that could be the greatest gift in the world. When people, yes. <laughs> when people have something that doesn't go the way that they want to, that builds that, uh, um, that, uh, that muscle inside of us, yes. which, you can't, which you can't see. And that's a muscle of integrity. And, and, when pe and, when, and when people have that muscle of integrity, you can see that through their eyes. Like when you said, mm. look, look at somebody in the face and say what you mean. Um, that's something that we're missing with this next generation. Um, another analogy that I wanted to kind of point out with is uh, I heard, um, somebody was uh, given a lecture one time and they're like, well, if you take a ship and you turn it to one degree off of its path, it's going to end up in a area that um, it, the navigation is off. So yep. you're going to, you're going to end up somewhere new that you never expected to. So you got to pay attention to the navigator as well. And the navigator is the person inside you. It's not just the person driving. Um, you have to pay attention to what's navigating that momentum. 
Nice. Um, another thing is uh, the train analogy. Um, I heard uh, one of the guys you mentioned earlier in our conversation with Sean Dill. Sean Dill gave a talk at Berkshire's two years ago that I went to, and he's like, hey, man, life is like a train. You can jump on my train with me today, and I almost sound like him. You can jump off my, on my train with me today, and uh, you can stay on for the rest of your life. Or you might decide that the next stop is the spot you're supposed to jump off on, and that might be where you're supposed to be. But you might like nice. to be on my train forever. So you might just jump on and we can ride this train for, and it never stops, but you might jump off at the wrong stop and realize, damn, I need to jump back on that train. <laughs> so, so, <Okay. laughs> so, so we have to also be like, have a high sense of awareness as to where do we get off and where's our stop. Mm. And um, I know that uh, um, one of the other things I wanted to touch on is marketing. And uh, when you let other people do your marketing for you, um, when you get too big, um, it's not your message anymore. It's your image. And I, I think that, uh, one of the things that, one of the things you also touched on was, uh, we have to, um, trust people and build a tribe around us and build yes. un, un, unity for our, our network. And, uh, they always said that your network is your net worth. And, uh, so when you do have valuable people around you, you elevate to a higher level of uh, ability and uh, connection is one of the things I, I heard you talk about too. And that is the no like, and trust. And that's marketing. And if you find people's um, personality driven in their marketing approaches, um, that's where chiropractic will grow and succeed. You can't drive chiropractic to the future with a marketer's mindset. You have to drive chiropractic to the future with a chiropractor's mindset. And the chiropractor has to keep showing up and sharing their message because I can be the greatest marketer in the world, but it's your message that will be that, um, gosh, what do we call it in marketing? We call it the uh, charismatic leader. Mm. You, have to have, you have to have a charismatic leadership. And yeah. that's, the, that's the part where people pay attention to. Um, a lot of people, they won't go to chiropractic because they don't understand why it's a benefit to them. They think insurance should cover it. They think that, why should I have to pay for something? Well, you pay for your food, you pay for your housing, you pay for your gas. Like, do you expect somebody else to pick up that for you? Well, your healthcare is just as essential. I was at the hot springs last night, Jamal. And I was, oh, talking, I, was ta I was talking to this lady in the hot springs. Her daughter's a chiropractor. I know. And uh, just out of the blue, she's like asking me about myself and where I travel to and how I pick locations I go to. And I go, you know what? A lot of the places I go to are based around chiropractic seminars. They're based around chiropractic colleges. They're based around this chiropractic profession because I'm a conduit for the message. And I, I, the closer I am to the people that I support, the more knowledge that I, I can glean from them to be a better conduit and a bigger megaphone for something that I believe in. And I, I, she was talking about like, yeah, I was at this chiropractor and they told me it's going to be X amount of bucks for me to get underneath like chiropractic services and get chiropractic care, but I didn't want to pay them. And I was like, well, that's your choice. Um, you, you can live to be, you know, subluxated and you can have that quality of life, but that's your choice. If you wanted to like invest in your future, invest in your health and know that that chiropractor is going to be the captain and the navigator of your, your ship for your health, then, Hey, that's your decision too. But maybe we have to do a better job at what we're doing right now is talking about why it's important for the practitioner to take care of themselves and why it's important for the profession to take care of the profession. And then we all go in a better direction and, you know, the students are the future. So I appreciate you jumping off with me today and uh, sharing your wisdom. And I'm ready to start coaching with you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's freaking get it. <laughs> One thing that you did say, which is really far before we touch on the next point, uh, was we are doctors of the process. See, because one thing we need to do is we need to change the cultural conversation about chiropractic. So it's like, yes, I am a chiropractor. Oh man, this is a, listen, this is, this is there's there's some there's some depth to it, but it's like, how can we introduce ourselves? Suki taught me this, and I've heard it in so many other ways. How can we introduce ourselves? That's that that waits to introduce that you're a chiropractor, not as a means of shame. That's oh, it's a better chiropractor. No, it's like, but no, it's I'm a doctor of life expression. That's one of my favorite ways to say it, but it's like, we're a doctor of the process because see, there's expectations and then there's outcomes, but it's like a lot of people are just focusing or there's a process and then there's outcomes. A lot of people are just so focused on the outcome, that patient focused on the outcome. So it's like, 
how can you bridge and how can you understand they're on this pain island? I get this from my, my expert speaker coach, Majid, who's amazing. They're on this pain island. What does their potential or their pleasure island look like? And how can you bridge them there? Because that's what you're doing. You're bridging them there in the conversation and you're bridging them in your actual process. But with students, a lot of people don't want to know the philosophy. Oh, well, screw that. I just want to be, able, I just want this, the, I just want pass boards and get my license so I can do whatever. Or they don't want to learn the philosophy. And they, I'd even say a lot of students don't want to put in the work to be an Olympic level adjuster. They want to do mm -hmm. just what's there to get by, mm -hmm. just to pass. Because I'll tell you what, Jim, it's not hard to pass technique classes besides Hockman. That's about it. He does Thompson and SOT, but it's not it's not hard. No, I'm not talking shit about my professors. It's the system that we're in. And we got some badass professors, but the professors can only teach us so much because it's up to the student to invest in the physical skill that it is to adjust. And a lot of people just want to do the bare minimum. And that's exactly why chiropractic is at in addition to the fighting. Because they're like, oh, yeah, well, I'll just uh, bring this person's head here and just uh. like, no, that is. Yes, excuse me. Yes, at this level. But there's so much more of a level. There's so much more of a level. There's so much more you can do with that. But you don't want to find that out because guess what? You just want to do the bare minimum, which is OK. But don't go ahead talking shit about me when I'm dedicated to this and I'm learning and I'm loving and because I can't get enough of this shit, man. I love learning more on how to connect with people, how to adjust and how to be a better doctor, how to be a better human being. And a lot of people don't want to worry about the process or pay attention to the process. And Inky Johnson talks about this, which is one of my favorite inspirational speakers, because a lot the process is what saved his life. The process is what saved my life. All of what had taken me to get to this point in life has been the process. It didn't just happen in one instance. And a lot of people think you get that degree or you walk across the stage and you shake our, the president's hand and you're now ready to go out in the world. But that's not the case. You are now qualified to go out in the world. But what gets you ready is what you're willing to do, is what you're willing to endeavor for, is what you're willing to sacrifice, is what you're willing to invest your energy and your time in, which can come in seminars, which is the parallel curriculum that's not talked about. Because, oh, why would I spend some more money? Because the school should provide every me. The school provides you the space to get the license and get to get the boards and initial connection and a footing in, profession, in the profession. But what you do is that it takes effort. It's like, how do you show up and how do you be? That's what allowed you to enter a whole nother level of expression, which is where the profession is going, by the way, because the profession is evolving because COVID, George Floyd, that shit needed to happen, unfortunately, and it boils my blood that it needed to. But the whole world is paying attention now. And de best believe, like with what Brett's got going on, what KTC's got going on with Chiropractors for Justice and challenging a lot of what's been allowed because excellence isn't what you do, it's what you allow. We are now evolving with, a more, with more awareness so that way we can take more action or more uh, efficient, powerful action. And that way we can actual actualize who we need to be which was the original powerful healers, the most diverse, the most powerful healing profession in the world that deals with the nervous system that connects with, guess what? All of the other systems, which all these other doctors study, we are the one system that intertwines them all, but we don't teach the other doctors and professions that shit because of why? Ego. Solution, we gotta connect. Wow. Um, also, also, you got me fired um, up. I, I wish you were here because I, I would I would get under your care too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the greatest thing is uh, showing appreciation for the amount of connection that I get. Um, one yeah. of my highest life values is connecting, and connecting with you today has been a real honor. And mm. um, I think you did offer a lot of solution to people to find some clarity. Um, with their path that they're on, because you did say it's not a sprint, it's a journey. And, it's definitely um, not a sprint. Don't try that shit. <laughs> and I, I think that, you know, from the lens that you shared with people today, um, it's it's definitely a value add to people to pay attention. And um, yeah, like I'm saying, man, like what you're doing for our, for the group that you're cultivating, um, those people are, are certainly blessed um, because mm. I, I shared some knowledge with you before we started this. And there's three things that people will share things mm. they will say, things they won't say, and things that they'll never say. 
And as yes. soon as uh, you talked about this George Floyd and this COVID thing is now we're talking things that we won't share. And I think that right now we're at a very uh, interesting moment in our culture and our society that we need to start talking about these things that people won't share. Yeah, uh, that, that that's when that's when we have an awakening, not only in our ego and in our culture, but in other people's egos and cultures. And we become more sensitive to other people's plight. And we become more sensitive to other people's histories. And uh, just because a guy has a certain tone of skin doesn't mean that they're right or wrong. It's what's inside their head and their heart. And that's where chiropractic can connect people is the head and the heart connection. And whether it's a, a dogmatic approach um, from some type of way you were brought up or some way that you see other people, um, chiropractic is a solution to connecting the head and the heart. And that's something that's culturally relevant, regardless of skin tone or ethnicity or where the hell you grew up. So um, with that being said, is there anything I didn't touch on today that you wanted to discuss with our audience? Oh man, what a question. Man. I know I'm rapid fire, man. <laughs> oh no, I, I love it. I mean, if you, I will ask, or I'll, I'll say if the, if anyone that, you know, listens to this, cause I know it's going to reach the right people at the right moment at the right time, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm on Facebook, Jamal Fuster. There's two dots, AKA and umlauts in my last name. Um, reach out to me over Instagram. It's at Jamal Fuster, no three A's. It's only two A's, J-A-M-A-L. Um, get that ask, I get asked that a lot. Uh, check out my co- uh, my podcast called Soul Coffee, uh, where I get to just freaking connect and play with some of my greatest mentors, people of massive influence on me, where I feel like my magic comes in like conversations such as this. Uh, so you guys get to connect with some of the most important people I've connected with thus far. We're going to drop episode nine this coming Monday, June 28th ish. If I could leave. Oh, man, if I could leave something for y'all, man. Whatever it is that you want to do in this world, you can do it. You can do it. And if you're if you don't know how, that's okay. Paint the vision and be in it and know where you're at, how you're at, why you're at. And the universe, or if you're more religious, God, Buddha, like whatever, whatever you resonate with, it will shift. That higher power will shift things in circumstances events people and opportunities beyond beyond your wild imagination to make things happen for you as life is always happening for you so if you can stay connected to your soul's purpose if you can continuously refine that and you can work on yourself and you can heal yourself so that way you can help others heal because you can only help others heal to the depths in which you've traversed within your own soul things are going to continue to shift for you And the work never stops, but work is fun when you're in the flow and you're in the flow and work is fun, baby. KTC. (laughs) It's like, man, stay in the flow, stay working and don't be afraid to get quiet and get still and reorganize and just know you're exactly where you're meant to be as you are meant to be. I believe uh, Ram Dass said, be here now. Mm. Mm. So I'm going to close out with that. I'm going to thank everybody for being with us today on this episode of Cairo Hustle Livestream. Um, it's been a real honor to have you on today, uh, Jamal, um, DC to be. And uh, it's it's been a, a lot of fun to uh, connect with you. And uh, maybe I can be a guest on your show someday. <laughs> oh, man, it's already cooking. It's definitely already cooking because you, you messed around and you told me a little bit of your story. And I'm like, oh, there's some juice there, Jim. <laughs> Well, um, I'm going to close out by telling you guys you're one story away. Keep hustling, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. And uh, Jamal, have a great day, and uh, let's talk soon, okay? Thank you, brother. Enjoy, everybody. (laughs) Talk soon. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.